The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is again our epistle reading for this past Sunday, the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. We're looking at 1 Corinthians, or 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 to 4, the beginning of that epistle reading. Paul said, Now we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal home in heaven, but not built by human hands. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling, because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. For while we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened, because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. My dear friends in Christ, the Apostle Paul began this reading by saying, now we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. But that's perhaps better understood not if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, but rather when the earthly tent we live in is destroyed. Someday this sinful earth that we live in right now, its existence will come to an end. Someday our sinful bodies will also come to an end. But that's not something that's discouraging for us who are believers in Jesus. Because we know that there's a heaven and glorified bodies that are waiting for us. Because of that, we're going to have an eagerness for our eternal home. It's going to be so great and so wonderful than the Lord, when the Lord does take us out of this sinful world and to be with him forever in heaven. But for now, we struggle in this sinful world as we are keeping on fighting the good fight of faith. So Paul said, Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling, because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. When Adam and Eve fell into sin, what they did is they stripped themselves of the holiness and the perfection, the image of God with which they had been created. And since then, all people have been conceived and born in sin. All people are spiritually naked. That is, without that image of God, without that righteousness, that holiness of God. And the tragedy of the fact that we're spiritually naked like that by nature is that there are so many people who just don't even recognize that that's even a problem at all. They don't even recognize their spiritual nakedness, but that's why God has given us his law. He's given us his law so that when we look at it and look at it seriously and see what it's really truly saying to us, then we're going to see our lost and condemned condition and to know that we are nowhere close to being able to, to being accepted by God into heaven on our own. So the law is there to show us that we need help. Help which God has graciously revealed to us in his son, Jesus Christ. And now since God has revealed Jesus to us, as our Savior, as our deliverer from sin, death, and all of life's troubles, don't we long for our eternal house, our eternal home in heaven, where everything will be perfect and wonderful as it was before the fall into sin? 
Don't we look forward to that day when we'll be permanently clothed in our eternal home in heaven? Then sin and all of its problems and troubles will never affect us ever again. Paul said, for while we are in this tent, this earthly life or our sinful bodies, while we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened because we do not wish to be unclothed, but clothed, but to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Oh, there was a preacher who one time asked his congregation, how many of you are anxious to go to heaven? And when he said that everyone's hand was raised high in the sky, but then he went on to ask a second question, how many want to go right now? And immediately those hands that were up were pulled right down, were dropped. And isn't it amazing that we all do look forward to eternal life in heaven. I don't think there's anybody who'd say, no, I don't look forward to heaven. I think we all say, we look forward to heaven. But in most cases, we aren't all that eager to go right now. Perhaps that's why God is allowing all of the trials and troubles that we face in this life, even things like a coronavirus, Things like that just help us to remember that this earth isn't where it really is all about, that we'll want to have an eagerness for our eternal home. You know, it's so easy to think of this life as being our real home, and then to think of heaven as being that place that we finally, ultimately go to after we've lived a full and fulfilling life here on this earth. But let's never forget that our full life isn't this life, it's the life to come, the one that awaits us in heaven. Even though we are faced by all kinds of trials and troubles and temptations in this life, Yet there really is a lot for us that God gives us to enjoy in this life. Well, think about it. As believing children of God, we have our Savior with us. He's giving us his help and his strength to, to fight the good fight of faith. And we have God's grace and love. That means that we really are blessed and life is really a wonderful gift from God. But God has something so much better in store for us in heaven. So may God always bless us with an eagerness for our eternal home, that we're always fighting the good fight of faith in this life while eagerly looking forward to the the greater blessings that God has in store for us in heaven. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, as we continue, as we sometimes or perhaps often struggle as we live in this sinful world, help us always to remember how blessed we are with Jesus right now and how blessed we are one day will be in our eternal home in heaven. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always.